We're absolutely delighted to have our friends and colleagues from Uncasan, Maria Flanagan, who is the community partner lead, and Dragana Sorrow, who's the educational uh, technologist uh, from Uncasan. And they will deliver today's webinar that is looking at engaging adult learners through their unique model of blended online community education. So Maria and Dragana will look at giving an overview of the work um, and then also looking at their unique learner centered blended online model of community education and then also um, giving some information about some of the courses that they offer. So Uncasan have been a long standing member of Aintas and are really leaders in digital technology way before uh, COVID hit and now we've all had to become um, experts in some capacity in this. So really we're looking forward to hearing information about how Uncasan have approached their online and um, blended learning model um, and we really want to get feedback from members. So this is an opportunity to see a specific example of, of what Uncasan are doing. Um, they're doing absolutely incredible work. And then also to have a breakout section where members can maybe discuss some of the challenges, barriers um, in terms of engaging with your own learners in an online context. And then we'll also have an opportunity to ask questions to Maria and Dragana. And this is really an introductory session. So there's lots of scope um, for future uh, webinar sessions. And also we can put you in touch with them for further information. So please do um, participate. Um, Maria and Dragana will go through their presentations and then we will have lots of space and time for discussion as well. So we hope you really enjoy this session. Um, and I will hand over now uh, to Maria. So thank you so much for taking the time today um, to lead out on this session for us. Thank you, Katie. Can you hear me okay? Excellent. Thanks for um, having us today. We're really um, delighted to be here and um, always it's um, engaging and educational every time I attend one of the webinars. Um, so today um, I'm joined with my colleague Dragana Sorrell and we're going to cover um, the following topics. Um, I'm going to give you a brief overview of our work and an introduction to our partnership model. Dragana will then discuss our learner-centred blended online model of education and then I'll come back and speak about what courses we have and other opportunities that may be of interest to some of our members. Sorry, Maria, can you just pop the screens? Sorry, thank you, Dragana. See, that's why I need a tech moderator. <laughs> We're good to go now? Yeah. Perfect, thank you. So anybody who has been to Ankasal may have heard of our um, very unique ethos. Um, and Onkasan's holistic learner-centred approach puts the learner, I suppose, at the heart of everything that we do. Um, our, our hospitality is integral to our, um, to our ethos, and that it provides, I suppose, that space for learners to be able to engage with um, adult education. One aspect of our ethos is the opening circle. Um, if you've ever attended a course in Onkasan or attended a meeting, you will have experienced this. It's a moment where we, I suppose, pause and reflect um, and it allows learners to, to be before they had to do. That was how one learner described it to me. Um, so for the purpose of today, I'm just going to read a quote that was from uh, Catherine and Louise's um, book, uh, Love and Social Change. So when love is at the heart of personal and social change, a radical vision is offered. Transformation in society cannot happen without learners and passionate actors. A radical vision creates new ways of living in common. So Uncasan was founded um, by our founders, Catherine Sapone and Anna Louise Gilligan, back in 1986. And their philosophy um, for education was that education is a fast track of poverty for individuals, which extends out into the families and into their communities. Um, in 1986, they established it as a community education organization from their home, which was the Shanty, and that became the original, gave the founding name to the Shanty project. Then in the mid 90s, they raised funds to build a purpose built center, which you can see here in the photograph, um, in the heart of the community in Jobstown and West Halla. And since then, we've supported over 16,000 students um, to, to access education programs. In 2014, then our model was extended um, to scale up, I suppose, the, the uh, model that we had based in Tala, and that, which was so successful for so many years. Um, and in 2014, our blended online community education model was piloted and officially launched then in 2016. So today, 35 years on from that first early dream that our founders had, 
Um, what started out as that dream from the kitchen table has now developed into an organisation whereby we are supporting um, learners in almost every county in Ireland. This is the picture if you're ever in Tala, you'll pass by it in um, Jobstown in Tala and you'll be more than welcome to pass to pop in for a cup of coffee when, when restrictions allow. So in today, in 20, 2021, uh, this photograph was taken actually just before lockdown last year. So our team has grown to over 20, 125 people who work to fulfill that dream that started in, 20, in 1986. Our team works across three main areas, our early years uh, education and care centres, uh, which were established as was to respond to the crit critical lack of high quality early years education and places in Tala West. So we provide high quality, affordable early years education and care for children in seven different locations across the city, in Tala, in Whitehall and in Cabra. Um, our adult education provision, um, Onkasan means PAC, so we offer a variety of affordable and accessible courses from access right through to further education and through to higher education. Uh, and we do that through collaboration with QQI, who award all of our, Q our further education courses, and as a linked provider of the Institute of Carlo, uh, Institute of Technology in Carlo, uh, we're a provider of uh, certificates and higher certificates and BA degrees. We also have a counselling and family support team who um, support our learners. We have 10 trained counsellors who provide a caring and non-judgmental place for learners to be able to talk and a family support team who provide a Lifestar programme um, and support our families who use our services. So this is a list of the family supports that we um, offer and that wraparound support that we mean that is so unique as most of on providing the space um, in Onkasan when, when things allow, uh, our community partners, the hospitality and nourishment. There's a very famous Onkasan scone, which is offered um, when people come into the building, our counseling services, we have mentoring support, um, access to Cairo IT library when, for learners who are uh, registered as higher certificate learners, um, and the student voice, which is very important in terms of getting um, the class representatives in each class. We also have additional supports and uh, Dragana will go into them in more detail in terms of um, some online tools that uh, enable to bridge that digital divide that we're all very familiar with um, and also financial supports and payment based payment options for learners. This is a picture I think sums up the hospitality. Someone described it uh, when you enter the building, it's like the building gives you a hug and it's that warm hospitality that's provided by our hospitality team offers that nourishment that many learners may not receive at home the hot breakfast and that famous scone and cup of coffee to warm them. So how do we engage with our learners? So we do this through a number of different ways, through open days, through outreach events, showcase at exhibitions and conferences, um, information sessions in our local community partner centres, and then through direct contact with phone calls and newsletters, local radio, uh, and through community partners. However, as you can imagine, a lot of those things were stopped because of COVID-19 in the last year. So one of the things that we introduced, which has been one of our best ideas this year, has been to introduce a weekly online um, information session every Friday at 11 o'clock, which provides a space for learners to come, for us to hear about their challenges and for them to ask any questions. So what do you need to um, access? A, um, you need access to a laptop, internet, obviously, and headset. Many learners we know don't have access to those things, so we look at different ways of trying to support them. So learners can access when they have access to their own uh, technology in the home, but also in, when things allow into our hub in Tala and through our community partners around the country. Just some pictures there of some of our community partners where learners are hosted around the country. Our community partner network is very vast now. We have over 180 uh, community partners across the country um, and you can see some different clusters around the country in Wicklow, Exeter, Waterford, Mayo and Donegal, Derry. So finally, my slide before I pass back on to Dragana, because I know I'm running out of time, is that our model is very much a partnership and collaboration. So it's about um, looking at all the different organisations that are out there. When our learners and community partners come to us with challenges and barriers, we like to and see is there any stakeholders out there that has a solution, and we work with these different organisations to, to do that. And um, I always come back to the phrase, um, if you want to go far, Go, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I think that is very prevalent in, in the work that we do. So I'm going to now pass back to Dragana, who is going to talk about our technology. Thank you, Maria. So guys, for the start, I'm going to share my PowerPoint. Can I give me one second?
Okay, so I am just gonna share from the current slide and just can I ask everyone if you can see the full screen now? Yeah, great. Okay, so in the next 10 to 12 minutes, um, I am going to focus on three topics and I hope I'm going to be short and we have enough time for the breakout rooms. Um, so I'm going to talk uh, briefly about Onkosan's model of blended and online learning challenges that we um, faced in the last year and how we turned into in opportunities. And very briefly going to touch on how we gather student feedback and assignments. And the last topic will be open for further uh, specific questions guys if you have so as maria mentioned before we even our educational model put learners in the very center of the process we do build um, academic scaffolding and the wraparound services to provide that positive experience for learners once they enter our educational programs so in the next slide i'm going to talk just a little bit more further about those four elements so to start off, it's the, the real-time learning, and it consists of weekly online sessions and classes that are hosted on the Zoom platform. And from our experience, this platform is the most user-friendly, the most um, familiar to our students, and it takes the last bandwidth. There's no uh, major technical issues. Before, we used a um, different one which belongs to um, Blackboard Collaborate and Adobe Connect, but it did cause a lot of issues for the learners that are all across the, the, the country. So in the last year, that decision was made to move to the Zoom. And of course, be before COVID-19 um, pandemic, we did organize face-to-face -face induction and meet program workshops where learners had a chance to meet and have that informal learning as the part of their journey. And later on, I'm going to talk a bit more how we tackle that um, challenge nowadays. The second element is online learning system, and that's basically the online learning platforms that learning materials are posted and where learners log in to look at it. Um, and uh, for our higher education programs, we are using Blackboard uh, as a platform, and that's provided by IT Carlo. But also for our further ed and access um, education programs, we're using in-house um, Moodle as a learning platform. Uh, the next element is self-directed learning, probably the key elements for online learning. Um, and it really consists of students and learners logging in their own time and look the learning materials that could be where it from online articles or reading materials, videos, interactive activities like quizzes or other interactive software packages that were posted on uh, learning platforms. And then the last but not the least, probably the most important factor for our learners and for our practice is that student support we provide, um, uh, including academic support, tech support, um, administrative support if it's needed. And we have in-house mentoring program, counseling and support, which Maria already mentioned. Um, and of course, just to say now, our, our blended model is now moved fully online on temporary uh, basis, but we really hope that after that we're going to continue to have students in our classrooms and meet, they, they have opportunity to meet each other face to face. Um, another element very important to mention that our model uses flip classroom as instructional um, approach, so which really ties in well with adult learning principles and what that means, so some people might come across this term some not, but really means that learning materials are posted and um, accessible to students before the class. So in adult learning, it shows really well because there is no as element of surprise. So it's away from traditional system where you come in with doesn't not knowing what's going to be discussed in the class. In flipped classroom, students are prepared and they know what's going to be, what top is going to be covered. So they have really time to reflect the new information and connect with their prior knowledge and previous experiences. And in the classroom, 
the role of tutor is as a facilitator. So the whole learning process happening amongst learners through breakout rooms um, or pair discussion or group discussion or any other activities that are prepared for that class. So it really in enhanced that social learning that is happening um, in the overall experience. And this is just following from there, just to kind of to show the average week of the learner. So they will first log into their learning management system, which is Blackboard or Moodle. Um, they're going to review the learning materials that are there. They will then come into a weekly online classes, discuss their understandings, unwrap um, and create a new, construct new knowledge amongst themselves. After that, uh, after the class, they will receive a PowerPoint presentation and um, the, the class recordings, which is really handy for students who maybe could not make that class on, on a specific day. And of course, after that, they will work independently on their assignments. And really, the, the core of the whole our educational practice is that creating that learner community between tutor as facilitator and support, the providing support. Moderator is a person who will make sure that, that all classes go smoothly with no technical issue and will encourage the uh, learners to engage in classes. And of course, the main actors are our learners who will support and motivate each other through the whole process. Sorry to disturb you there, Dragnet. Yeah. You're, you're still on the opening slides. I'm not sure. Oh. For some reason. Oh, no. No problem. Um, We're listening to you, but just. OK, so I might just reshare my PowerPoint. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. Don't worry. It's absolutely no problem. So let's see. It, it, can you see now? Okay, so is it the, the, the slide with pictures? Yeah. Great, okay, so sorry. Uh, the, I know PowerPoint will go to the participants anyway, but um, apologies for that. So this is just to show what is our um, uh, pre-COVID times workshops and, and meet program workshops where students had opportunity to meet each other face to face. Um, can you see my next slide, challenges? Yeah, good. Um, so now the, the second and the part that we really want to focus is about challenges that we faced in the last year and how we turned them into opportunities. Um, the first two challenges, uh, which is lack of access to the internet and devices and low digital skill, it's very familiar to everyone um, and it really existed before uh, COVID-19 pandemic, but I guess it, it then now it emphasized and then we have a little bit more collaborative efforts to tackle that issue in, in general terms. Um, so the way Uncle San responded to those two challenges is that we really collaborated with external partners, um, uh, uh, connected with different projects like tech to, to, tech to student projects, um, received tech donations and established our own laptop loan scheme. Um, and as um, a response to the low digital skills, um, we actually established digital inclusion units that offers a variety of digital inclusion tools, including digital stepping stones, digital skills assessment tool, and Skills to Succeed Academy. Now, apart from the unit, we also provide intense one-to-one -one tech support to students. Uh, we deliver digital skills workshops, and um, as a part of our induction process, uh, each class in the beginning of the program uh, receives tech induction a class where they have a space to be familiar, get introduced to their learning management platforms like Moodle or Blackboard and Zoom platform for online classes. So really developing that confidence um, and com a comfortable uh, feeling to use uh, digital tools in, uh, in, in their learning. Um, the second or third challenge is lack of face-to-face -face classes. And I'm sure that many community projects and community education providers facing this as a major challenge. And the way we um, overcome this is that we are, again, collaborating way more with community partners to see if they can provide any support on their sides. 
but also on the other hand, from our side, we encourage students to develop their learning community on learning management systems. So that will be facilitated discussion in Moodle or Blackboard, um, or they will um, establish their own group, like a WhatsApp group or using any other digital tool that they're feeling comfortable with. Um, and another intervention, not intervention, but the, the action that we are using is that we are allowing space for students to uh, interact after the class. So we will open a Zoom class. Um, in, at the end, um, uh, the tutor and moderator will leave the class, but then students will stay and have their own ownership of that space so they can um, exchange any information is it course related or outside the course um, so they can have that informal and social learning in place. Um, then another challenge that we overcome, it's not so strong, but it is academic workload, which is due to homeschooling or learners need to care for their family members or there is a more workload like a, um, a double shift. So we have a learners with a double shift. So the really the academic workload then becomes bigger. So we put in place intense tutor support and academic workshops where they can discuss how to write the essay or complete their assignments. And the last challenge, which everyone, I guess, experiences is mental health issues. So we would offer mindfulness workshops, well-being programs or in-house counseling. But really the key for that is to listen the learner voice and, and look what is, the, uh, what is their need and put intervention in place. So for example, in some classes in further ed, um, we just put two classes of well-being or how to cope with the stress or time management skills. So it's really on demand and just um, listening their needs and the merging needs and put the action in place to support them. Um, so really the key takeaways for from this part is like to re, like for us it was that really need to kind of get in the role of a reflective practitioner and see where's the gaps and what we can offer to support our learners. And advice from organization and personally for me is really to make investment in digital competences uh, of learners, but also educators. So on the both side can be comfortable using digital tools in teaching and learning. And I guess the last one is collaboration. Um, internally within the organization and externally to, to have that uh, learner journey completed in the end of their programs. Um, and this is just an example of some of our digital uh, inclusion tools that we are sharing with practitioners and with learners. Um, if you're more interested in that part, please let us know and we can share with you. Um, there is a contact details of um, a person who is in charge for this unit, but you can again send emails and we will respond to it and make connection. Um, and the last thing I want to kind of uh, touch on is the student submissions and assignments. So the way we collect is we're using inbuilt tools in our learning management system. Systems. So for Blackboard, we would use Turnitin software for uh, students' assignments. For Moodle, it will be just generic submission boxes. It's just one of the tools that you can select. Um, apart from that, um, we will collect uh, students' assignments by email and then store in our kind of central database, Microsoft Office, SharePoint, if, if you're familiar with Microsoft Suite. Um, and some of the feedback to collect and store, we will do use Microsoft Forms, which is very similar to Google Forms or a SurveyMonkey or any tool if you're already using um, in your daily practice. So now I'm going to go, I give back to Maria. 30 minutes, not too bad. <laughs> so I'm going to stop share and Maria, you're ready to go. So I'm just going to bring us through some of the programs that we offer and also some opportunities that might be of interest to some of the members of um, the CEN network and the, the screen. Sorry, Maria. It's on the wrong side. Is it? Yeah. No, no, they're just, yeah, just this way. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. There we go. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> See, even us techists don't get it right all the time. <laughs> 
So in terms of, as I mentioned earlier, we offer um, access for the red and higher ed opportunities for, for learners to access courses at any stage of, um, of their journey. So here are some of the courses that we offer under our access program provision. Um, they are all online currently. Um, however, when the COVID restrictions would, um, allow, we will be moving back into the building for some of our courses with reduced numbers. So we have a number of courses under computers and technology, under health and wellbeing, and under first steps back to education. And there's a link there that when you get the slides, you'll be able to go to bring you straight to the website. We also have some introductory modules that are, I suppose, bringing people on that journey to if they're thinking about going on to higher education or accredited modules, but they would like to test the water first. So these are some unaccredited courses and in introduction to community development, community drugs work and community leadership and so on. And they just give people that opportunity to engage in learning, to get used to the technology um, before they go on and have the pressure of assignments um, and timelines and deadlines. We have a range of further education courses, which are all accredited by QQI, and they're all listed there. It would be generally um, QQI level five and level six courses over two years um, and run generally in our centre in Ankasan and Tala. However, at the moment, most of them are running online. Then moving just to our higher education provision, so our, um, our partnership with, with um, IT Carlo commenced back in 2008 when we started delivering courses in Okasan and our lead provider of the Institute of Technology um, Carlo Awards and we're accredited to deliver certificate, higher certificate and BA degree. And this is a list of some of the courses that we now have. So we have over 30 minor awards and um, which will be listed on the next slide. We have four different certificates which are all um, level six certificates which then progress on to the um, BA degrees at level seven in leadership and community development or applied addiction studies and community development. And again, there's a link there for people to get more information. This just gives the list of those 30 minor awards that somebody, again, somebody who wants to, is ready to start an accredited course, but is not really ready to sign up to a full certificate or BA degree. The idea is that people can access, um, at that, we're always kind of cognizant of the, of the, opportunity for a learner to be able to access something in small bite sizes because how many people are able to actually sign up for a three-year degree and um, you need to be able to give people the accessibility of being able to join uh, for a short course until they get their confidence and then they can um, engage on, on a longer path. So currently we have a number of opportunities available um, that will be running between April and August uh, and they're listed here. So if anybody is interested in uh, personal development Community care level five, special needs assistance level five, um, our transformative community education we're running in collaboration with KWETB. Um, the uh, link is there. You can email us to get more information on those courses. The application process, I've just outlined it here, the steps in terms of we would recommend somebody to come and explore your options, first of all, by joining one of our open days. Um, as I said, they happen every Friday um, at 11 o'clock. It's an informal chat where we go through a presentation and then there's time for chat and questions afterwards where learners can uh, express their um, challenges. Um, explore your financial supports. Come to us if you need any help with that. We've got compiled a list of, of supports that are out there. Submit your application and then your, your application will be reviewed and uh, you'll be offered a place pending that you meet into all the criteria. And the programme starts then in, we've outlined the dates and deadlines here which I won't go into all the detail because we know we're tied on time, but it gives you more information. I just want to bring to your attention the university scholarships, which is really good if you're coming to either Ankasan or to any other third level education. Um, they're open for applications at the moment uh, until the 12th of April and the website is there, university.org. Really good opportunity for somebody who wants to engage in for finance as a barrier um, to access supports to do your um, higher level education. So some other opportunities that are coming up within Ankasan um, we have an online webinar coming up on the 23rd of April, which will be a, a two and a half hour event online. Um, at the very beginning of it, we're just going to be doing the launch of our Irish Aid um, Deve Development Education Project, which has um, just been announced recently. And um, that will be followed by a lecture um, on social action modules of teaching and learning for social enterprise development. And we'll include speakers, Dr. Sheila Cannon, who's from Trinity College, and Rosemary Kuna, who's one of our ex-students and who's the founder of Social uh, Dignity Partnership. I know she's well known to many in, in um, on Ancus, and our own Susie Khan. Um, and there's a link there to click to that in Eventbrite. So just two other things then that are worth mentioning. We've just started a, a European project called the Fatherhood Project. It will be run over two years 
and it's to meet the needs of young parents, young fathers who are between the ages of 18 and 30, and to develop some training supports and tools for them. So if anybody's interested, you can contact myself. And then finally, just on the point of technology enhanced learning, Dragana mentioned the need for you know in enhancing capacity at building. So we we're very grateful that we've got support from the RT Comic Relief Fund to be able to deliver um, two courses over the coming months. Um, they will be short six week courses specifically for community educators. So we'll be getting in touch with everybody about those courses in the near future. Uh, and there's our contact details will be on the slides just for anybody who wants any more information from either of us. And, and we encourage people to follow us on social media because often opportunities come up um, which um, we will post there. But that is me. I'm going to go back to. Be a decline in engagement in online learning for a couple of people, and some of the issues that came up were lack of Wi Fi access and um, the anxiety that a lot of learners are feeling due to COVID 19 and the risk, and then also learners with disabilities really needing that one to one support and missing that in an online setting. And then there were some really creative strategies to keep learners engaged online, including having one to one meetings and tutorials with learners on Zoom to take them through it and then sort of engaging learners through more social and fun classes that are less formal. So those were some of the main points. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there was, there was great comments made and, you know, there was definitely a discussion of the positive elements that have come out of it undoubtedly. Um, but then there are also difficulties in terms of even accommodation and home situations are different for everyone, you know, access to, you know, technical, you know, laptops and devices is definitely different in every home as well. And, uh, you know, but um, there were there were two questions actually that were raised that I do want to mention. So the first one was, um, what can we do to address the kind of social deficit that's arising, you know, and um, like, you know, after Zoom meetings, it's great to have these spaces for everybody to communicate, but is there more that we can be doing it and how can we do that? And then this, the, the next question was as well, you know, about has the age demographic changed as a result of COVID and what can we know about that? And, you know, can you know, cannot be addressed as a positive if it has changed and what does that look like? So those, those are two interesting questions that came out of our group as well to be answered. It did, yeah. It was just myself um, and two other people, Art and Elizabeth, but actually, thank God it was small in the end because we had a lot to say. Um, a lot of the issues that were raised in Laura's group came up again. Wi-Fi was mentioned particularly in maybe more rural areas. That can be a big issue. Um, device access was another issue. Um, and then I guess we've talked a little bit as well about kind of online teaching methods and also methods of engagement. I think it was Art who said that sometimes you kind of feel like a magician pulling rabbits out of a hat, trying to keep it entertaining, trying to keep people engaged. And then um, I know um, Elizabeth was saying that actually she has been receiving groups from community education more than ever before. So kind of learners of an older level who are looking to improve their digital skills as a result. Um, of the move to kind of, um, I guess, as a, as, as a result of restrictions and trying to use those uh, skills and gain those skills to use in social settings as well. So that's a kind of interesting thing to think about when Orla says, like, you know, has that age demographic change? There has another shift there as well. So those are kind of the stuff that came up in our group. Yeah, thanks, Katie. Yeah, uh, thanks to Sue, Sylvia and Helen for their input. Uh, we covered a lot of the same ground, I think, but a few of the, the kind of standout um, points and feel free to jump in if, if I've missed anything, please. But a few of the interesting ones were about how certain um, sometimes learners can actually internalize the fact that they can't get in or out of breakout rooms or connectivity is, is the problem, but they'll feel it's their fault and that that can be something you have to actually tackle as the, the tutor in that, in that situation, which is, which is interesting. Uh, also, pacing can be really difficult to pace classes is, is trickier in the online setting. Um, and I suppose it's an obvious one, but it may be worth mentioning is, I mean, it, it can be much harder to build rapport and trust relationships in the online context. And that is just so core to adult and community education. It's worth, I suppose, flagging, uh, highlighting that. Thank you so much. And I think definitely in our group as well, it was very much about the fact that, you know, face to face supports are needed um, for certain cohorts of learners. And, and I mean, that has come up really. And just some of the mental health impacts a year on, like we we must address that. And, and that's something that can really affect people's ability to partake in an online context. Something else that had come out of ours was like formalizing um, the online programs of the QQI standards and, and evidence uh, kind of measuring that piece in an online context, which is difficult. And I think probably one thing that's coming across the board is that you know one size doesn't fit all and that's why people access adult learning community education 
and in an online setting where it's more it's very difficult to tailor make um, and, and provide those you know individual necessary supports that that we're always talking about and I think in terms of some of the questions there around you know the, the social deficit and even that fallout of COVID age demographic Angus is very interested in looking through the National Fet Learner Forum and um, getting feedback from learners but also doing research to see um, and we will be doing a campaign looking at really sharing information and some membership webinar sessions that will look at the data coming out a year on from COVID. So we will be sharing information with members around that. But I might just hand over to Dragana and Maria. If there was anything specific, um, I don't know anything that maybe, you know, some of those questions that are coming up um, of, of providing those kind of informal spaces. I know you kind of touched on that a little bit, but if anything that you heard there from the feedback that you would like to address, please feel free. And we will send around additional information and have um, you know, if there's members that are looking for specific information around a topic, like I said, in two weeks time, we will have another online learning uh, engagement method session, which we will send information. So this is a conversation that we're going to continue to have with members and help support in any way we can. So Maria and Dragana, if you want to add anything to the, to the conversation before we end today's session, please feel free. Well, I think first for Katie, it's very good to have next session that will kind of uh, look more into this um, online learning methodologies. And that's what I can see the in our group, it was a QQI, um, quality assurance and process is complicated. Um, it's also like from our experience, we've been through the process of um, uh, being qualified to deliver blended learning in further education. So it, it is a little bit uh, bigger process that you need to go through. We don't have a time, okay, unfortunately, to touch on that, but um, definitely the approach, the strategies um, and teaching methods that will be used kind of cover both questions. And I cannot give you the simple answer. I would definitely uh, need a bit more time to kind of unwrap that, um, but for the social um, social kind of enabling social spaces, like really we are also like, even though we have it, we still kind of listening to the learners and check what they want and what it works, what it's not. Sometimes it's just uh, uh, error, trial and error and see what it work, works for that specific cohort of learners. Like sometimes one class doesn't need what another class needs. So it's really, we are tailoring as we go in terms of the support enabling that spaces for them to, to um, come together. Like another part for us um, helping is like if they have a project as their assignment, that's really good kind of space for them to work together, um, to socialize. But for, for some people, it's completely um, stressful process, but then for other people, they really enjoy it. So I, again, um, I don't think there's a, like just one solution, as you said, Katie, one size fits all. It's really just trying and just uh, translating what we did in face-to-face -to, -face to online uh, setting in a different ways. Um, so, and then if, if we need a bit more and another session on that, like I'm more than willing to kind of come in and we unwrap those specific questions. And I think just to say to everybody, we will be sending out a survey. So if you could indicate specific, um, if there's something specific that you'd like us to cover, we can look at that. Maria, did you want to come in on anything before we? Um... Yeah, just one final thing, I suppose, is like, I suppose with us, it's about giving and um, creating opportunities for learners to be able to engage and for community organizations that you work with. So provide those spaces where you can hear and listen what the challenges are um, and then by doing so, you can react to them. I think it's been, it's about in the last year, we've all been very reactive. We've all had to impulsively do things outside of our comfort zone. And unfortunately, our learners have had to do the same, but it's about, I suppose, making sure that we are listening to their challenges and responding as, possible, as quick as possible to try and um, encourage them and engage them and keep them um, motivated. Um, and the other thing is, I suppose, to look to your network, look to the organizations in your area. You know, if there's corporate partners, there's lots of organizations that are willing to provide pro bono support. Some of our partners have done some workshops on CV skills and building um, online. You know, and it doesn't take much for them to offer a, a free pro bono one hour workshop on something. And that can be really engaging for, for learners too. Um, but we found that the open day information sessions have been really good to listen and to have those spaces. And sometimes they go on a bit longer 
but like so be it because learners need to talk they need to maybe get the questions off their chest um, and just to have that space too that you can find out do they need extra support like counseling uh, when the supports so when you're listening you can react to those um, and, and look to your network look around and see is there anybody out there that can help you to find the solution to the problem you have if it's, if it's headsets is there somebody that can donate them locally um, tech companies if it's laptops see is there companies that might be able to support you